Technology and trucking has gone way beyond GPS. On this episode of Driven Too Far, we're checking out the latest advancements in artificial intelligence. Hello, I'm Andrew Winkler, and this is Driven Too Far, the truth about trucking, a podcast that helps over-the-road truck drivers balance career and family. Welcome back. On this episode, we're going to talk about the five ways that AI is transforming the trucking industry. The first is autonomous trucks. And I think this is an interesting topic because there's still a group of drivers out there that the whole autonomous truck movement, I think, is making them nervous, like they're coming for our jobs, they're coming for our jobs. And uh, while the advancements are happening, uh, it's not going to happen anytime soon. So what I think about or when I have conversations with drivers on this, I says, I want you to think about uh, just think about a car, right? So obviously Tesla has some kind of automated driving feature. Uh, some of the, the nicer General Motors products, uh, when you get to the high end trucks and Escalades and things like that have features like that. But even though they have those features already built in, we know the technology's there, they're not letting the car take over, right? There's always a driver in that seat. And I think in Tesla's case, you can only take your hands off the wheel for so long before it makes you uh, take control of the vehicle again. So when you think about that, when they're not allowing a, just a car or a truck or a four-wheeler out there to be automated, they're certainly not going to allow a 80,000-pound vehicle uh, to move up and down the road um, without a driver in the seat uh, or even in the vehicle itself. And when we hear about some of the testing that's going on, uh, I, I think I always hear about like Texas and Arizona and some states like that. So interestingly enough, when they are still doing those testings, they're operating in warm states, they're operating in areas that are fairly flat. Uh, I, I don't know of any testing that's gone on up in the northern half of the U.S. when you start to get you know, colder climates in the winter, when you're talking about ice and snow, uh, you're talking about mountain driving, things like that. So I would just put, put your mind at ease. While AI is certainly a big part of that, and it's getting smarter and smarter all the time, it's quite a ways off. In fact, I've heard some experts say it's probably 30 years off before they're ever going to allow a truck to move up and down the road without an operator in the vehicle somewhere. Now, the safety side, uh, so many of you, especially if you're working for larger truck lines, you probably have dash cameras already. Uh, some of the smaller operators have even jumped into that, and they, they understand the, the idea behind the camera to have it in your cab for protection. And it may only be facing outward, but whether you're doing outward, inward, both, whatever that looks like, there's a lot of AI built into those camera devices. Uh, the inward facing ones, we know that they, they watch a driver's eyes and they're looking for drowsiness. Uh, if they detect something, there's probably alerting you some way in the cab. It's probably also sending a trigger or message maybe to your safety group. And then the outward facing ones, uh, you know, they're out there detecting the traffic signs and the vehicles in front of you and the following distance and all those things. And again, it, it's monitoring your safety habits. Uh, it's recording all that. And, and if we get too close or we miss something, we start to speed, uh, we cross the center line, whatever that looks like. You're, again, you start to get notifications in the cab, but it's also sending your safety department some kind of um, some kind of note to tell them, hey, this truck is, is struggling with this. Now, if, you're, if it's just a once in a while thing, uh, maybe you took your eyes off the road for a brief moment, no, no harm, no foul type thing, but from a safety director's perspective, they're looking for patterns in behavior. And, and that's what those cameras and the software behind the cameras kind of help us do. It kind of strings it all, all together. Uh, while the, the driver that maybe has a one-off incident uh, is not a big a deal as the driver that's having consistent incidents and stuff. But that's where the AI detection is kind of happening on the safety side and the cameras in the trucks. It's being used in dispatch and routing, and you may not even realize this as a driver, but uh, more and more so, when you think about how complex it is to actually plan a group of trucks, if you work for a little bigger carrier, maybe you have a driver manager or a fleet manager, and maybe they have 25, 35, 40 drivers on their board. When, when you're inbound to that terminal and stuff and they're trying to find your next load out, you know, how does that dispatcher go about getting you on the right load? Uh, the old school way was, you know, first in, first out type thing. Uh, or we had to have a conversation. We had to have a phone call. How many hours do you have left? What's going on there? Do you have time off coming up? 
The cool thing about AI and where this is starting to go is that it's starting to keep track of all that information behind the scenes. So we run a, a software system in-house that has a module called Driver Choice. And the, the driver has it on his app on his phone. And what it does is uh, when the driver, it allows the driver to select a load or have input on selecting his next load. But it's not just showing you all the loads. That dispatch sauce system in the background is it's looking through your driver profile. Are you a regional driver? Are you a local driver? Are you an OTR driver? Uh, do you have home time coming up? Um, where's your log hours for the week? Do you have hours to continue to work? Do you have a holiday schedule off? So the dispatch software can see all of that, then go look at the load board in the system and say, this would be good matches for this driver based on all this criteria that we've set up. So that's how the AI is kind of working in the background in dispatch. Uh, it's making the driver's manager, driver manager's job much simpler where there's so much data and information there to juggle. Uh, the, the computer system's doing that for them. And hopefully it's given you um, better choices of loads, better loads that match your likings better, uh, keeps you in the areas you want to run, um, kind of knows your profile and your preferences and things like that. The fourth area AI is really helping us in transportation. And, and for us, this is probably more on the brokerage side than anything, but you hear so much anymore about the fraud and the double brokering and the freight theft and things like that's going on. And you're, you're kind of wondering is if your broker and loads out to a carrier, how do you know who that carrier is, especially if they've never hauled for you before? You've got a hot load, it needs to move. You've got this carrier that gets on the phone with you and, and they seem to have all the right credentials. Uh, but I'm telling you, if they're a fraudster, they're just really good at faking it all. And they're telling you all the things you want to hear and if you don't have the ability to go in and check those things out and verify those things, um, you're going to be in trouble. Sooner or later, it's going to catch up to you. The, the challenge with that is sometimes you have so much freight to move or this load's really hot and the customer's already chewing on you. Where's the truck? Where's the truck? And you get this um, truck line on the phone that they say they can handle it for you. You're tempted just to give them all the information, get it going and stuff like that. But what you didn't know is maybe you uh, gave it to somebody that has the intent of stealing the load. Maybe that broker is gonna turn around and rebroker it again. That's the double brokering part. And, and from your perspective, you start to lose track of the freight. You don't know what truck really has your freight. And that's where the double brokering can be such a problem. We started using a uh, software program. It's in the cloud, but it's called Highway. Uh, it's, and it's gohighway.com. It's probably one of the better ones we've seen, and it's definitely using AI to do that. So it's checking off six different things. When we bring up a carrier's name, and I can just go into chief carriers, I can see our own status on stuff. The first thing it's looking for is, do you have operating authority? Green check, right? Do you have active insurance? So it's making sure you have active insurance, and it has a way to go out and check that, where in the past sometimes those things can be could be faked uh, somebody can white out some insurance and put a new date in there and, and you could fake those but going through this system it doesn't allow that to happen you don't have any out of service orders from the department of transportation or the fm fmcsa uh, they know that everything's valid uh, it can see your csa scores it knows that you're uh, in good standing and good status with all your your crash and your maintenance and your hours of service and your and your driver fitness stuff. So it can quickly check all that. And then this is kind of a big one where it can see active inspections. So one of the things we, one of the ways we catch fraudsters out there is you get somebody to call in once to haul your load. So as a broker, you're supposed to vet that carrier that's calling in and we check on their insurance and we check on their operating authority and we go look up their CSA scores and stuff. I mean, like I said, a lot of that can be faked, but what this particular program is doing is it actually has access to all the inspections, the highway, the roadside inspections that the trucks go through and it can see how many inspections you've had and how often. So if this guy's a fraudster calling in and he says, uh, yeah, we run 10 trucks and we've been in business for five years 
And when the when this highway program goes out and checks all that, and all of a sudden it doesn't see any roadside inspections, and you've been in business for five years, that's a pretty big red flag because the odds are you're definitely going to get pulled in. The other thing it might be able to see is uh, maybe you do have some road roadside inspections and can see that in there. But what it's seeing is all your roadside inspections happened up in the northeast part of the country, and here they're trying to book a load maybe in the southwest, and it's clearly a lane that your trucks don't run in. So it's just got some really cool uh, red flags and alerts that kind of help us stay on top of this the fraud and, and everything that's going on. Because these guys, these fraudsters, uh, they move fast and they're smart. They're no dummies, that's for sure. And trying to stay on top of all their tricks, um, it, it's a daunting task for sure. So use some AI to help us out. Talk about workflow automations. So that's number five. Uh, what is a workflow automation? You're probably using it on your mobile comm system. Uh, so the workflow goes, you dispatch sends you a load. You accept the load. You arrive at the shipper you depart the chipper and then once you do that maybe it sends you the next chunk of information maybe you get to destination you arrive at destination you send your empty call in and then all of a sudden your next load comes out to you that's a workflow process so it puts things in in a particular order for us they're also using that in the background in the office so it's a big deal now we scan in our paperwork right we take a picture of it with our phone whatever that looks like and it shoots it into the office that's a workflow process that's probably happening in the background. It used to be we had to have several billing clerks that would take your paper out of your envelope and break it apart, and the bill ladies go over here, and your log sheets go over here, uh, your fuel receipts go to a different spot, and everybody had um, a certain thing, and it had to go through all these different people before we could take the time to bill it out to the customer to get paid for our freight. Now what it does is because that scanned image AI sees that and it pushes it right through uh, the whole process very quick. So it's looking for a signature on your bill of lading and we can set up rules that the AI looks for. And as long as it's checking the box, check the box, check the box, and it goes through that set of rules, then it's automatically pushing that bill out to the customer for the, for the freight or for the, the transportation side of it. And no human had to touch it. So that's the beauty of the workflow process that's probably happening already in your back office. Uh, maybe some of you get, uh, maybe you're a little slow to turn in your paperwork on your trips and stuff and you always have some pesky person calling you say, hey, scan in your paperwork. Well, that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep that whole workflow process happening. The other thing it can do, it, there's even an automated piece to that where maybe you get a message across your mobile comm reminding you to send in your bills or something like that. That might be the system recognizing that you completed that trip on such and such a day and it hasn't seen the scan paperwork yet. So it's an automation that just sends out a note to remind you to, hey, could you please get that scan and send in to us? I think about uh, one of the other ways is talking about building loads in the system. And for us, you know, we're full truckload type carrier. So it's usually point A to point B type stuff. Once in a while, we have a stop along the way. But think about um, the LTL guys and when they have how many packages on the, that set of double trailers and it goes into um, the warehouse and it gets resorted how many times before it makes the final destination. You're thinking about FedEx, UPS, all those guys. How many times those packages in the past would have had to been hand sorted to stuff? Well, now everything's a barcode and a, um, on the rollers and stuff and it just it automatically happens. So that's the power of AI too. And I'm sure, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm sure your friendly UPS driver and your FedEx guy, I'm sure the AI has something to do with their daily routes. You know, how, what's the best route around the city to make all these deliveries that are in the back of my van? So I'm sure AI is doing that in some sort of orderly fashion to help them be more efficient and quicker with the routes. So in conclusion, that's kind of AI in a nutshell. It's already here. It's being used in the background, whether you actually realize it or not. Uh, it's helped us a lot with efficiencies. It's probably helped us um, when, when you think about, you know, we talk about how hard it can be to get uh, good people these days, right? The hiring has got such low unemployment rates. But that's one of the things we do if we have certain positions open in the company and we're struggling to hire a body to come in and help us 
maybe there's an answer there with automation and robots in uh, IA to help us through that. So it's here, it's here to stay. It's only gonna get better and better. Uh, so I think, um, you know, embrace it when you can. It's, it's really is making our lives easier. Thanks again for joining us on this episode. If you're looking for a carrier that's always on the cutting edge of technology, check us out at chiefcarriers.com. 